Every culture on this planet has identified the four key elements, sun, wind, water, earth. And so let's say that we're on a permaculture cruise. We rented a sailboat and we're sailing around and we're talking permaculture, grooving and all kinds of stuff. Unfortunately, our boat goes down. Nobody dies, we survive, but we end up on an island. But the island is a bare island. Maybe there's fresh water coming out of the middle of it, but all it is is rock and sand. So in that situation, do we have earth? Do we have sun? Do we have water? And do we have air? Yep. And how long are we going to live on that island? What are we missing? We're missing the plant community. You cover that island now with plants, and you got a place that we can get out of the wind, we can get out of the sun, we can build a canoe, we can build a house. There's wildlife, there's animals, there's food. We can survive on that island. Plants are the great alchemists. That's a really important thing. They take the four key elements and it's because of the plants that the human family or the animal family can survive. Now, when we talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we talk about what are the most important things humans have to have in order to reach that level of security and abundance. And the first thing is we have to have food, shelter, clothing, water, and then we want community, we want love, we need one another, we need valuable work, we need a spiritual life. Basically that pyramid grows, but everything is built on this idea that if we don't have food and we don't have water, we don't have fresh air, we're dead anyway. So we have to get all of those things. And where do those things come from? Food, shelter, clothing, fresh air, or water. It comes out of the natural world, plants. They provide all of that for the animal kingdom and we're part of the animal kingdom, all right? Now, where do plants come from? That big old tree sitting right there, it wasn't there 50, 60, 70 years ago, the little twig. And now there's this big massive thing, where did it come from? It literally came from carbon out of the atmosphere. 96% of that tree came out of thin air, literally the CO2 out of the atmosphere and through the process of photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is taken out of the air Water is brought up through the roots, and the energy of the sun takes those two molecules, breaks them apart, and recombines them into a sugar molecule, and the waste product is oxygen. C6H12O6, sugar, and then oxygen. The energy of the sun does all that work. And now from that molecule, the entire plant community survives and exists that's the foundational molecule and out of the plant kingdom the human family and the animal kingdom can exist from eating those plants but it all starts from plants and it came out of thin air when that tree dies and it falls over onto the ground what happens to that tree over a period of 30 or 40 years life comes in mycelia comes in bacteria come in and they break down they eat that carbon in that tree and those little bugs are just like you and me they eat food and they exhale carbon dioxide and that co2 that came out of thin air now gets expressed back into the atmosphere as it breaks down so the tree comes out of thin air it dies it falls over and 30 40 50 years later it's gone you can't even tell there was ever a tree there it went back into the atmosphere all right so now we ask the question, remember seventh grade math? If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So if the source of security and abundance comes out of the natural world and the natural world comes out of thin air, do you mean to tell me that the source of security and abundance comes out of thin air? This is not a trick question. That's how it works. And who decides how many plants are going to be in our backyard or our front yard or our community or our landscapes or our countryside? Who decides how many plants are going to be? So who's in control? Yeah, we can do this. Plants are the great alchemists. And our job is to work with those plants. And that's why 
when you got interested in permaculture and you opened the book, the first thing you got hit in the face with was all this information about plants because they are the building block. They are the thing we use to create security and abundance and clean water and clean air. We do all of this work with plants. And that's why they're so important. But it's not the only piece, but it's the foundational piece. And they come out of thin air. <laughs> when are we gonna run out of rock on this planet? When are we gonna run out of sun? When are we gonna run out of the air, all right? We can do this, it's all there. It's just design and intention. That's it. And that's what this course is about. How do we as human beings use design and intention to create security and abundance and leave the planet in better condition than when we arrived?